everyone. I saw Claire Savitz make a St. Louis gooey butter cake on her channel a little while ago, and ever since, it has been on my absolute must-try list. I've never heard of a gooey butter cake before, but it has all the right words in the title to make me think it must be fabulous. Reading through the recipe in Dessert Person, it's definitely a unique take on a cake, one using techniques for cake that I've never seen before. So that's what I'm gonna make today. Come bake with me. Like I said, this is a pretty unique cake recipe that I've never seen, because it uses yeast. So I'm just gonna bloom the yeast in some lukewarm water. She says to whisk it, so I'm gonna do that. And we're gonna let that sit for about five minutes. All right, we've bloomed, so now we're gonna add in our milk, sugar, egg yolk number one, egg yolk number two, egg yolk number three, one whole egg. Salt, flour number one, flour number two, and now, and now we mix to combine. All right, that looks pretty combined. Now, with the mixer running, I'm going to add my butter one tablespoon at a time. It is supposed to be at room temperature, and because I was supposed to mix this cake hours ago, it is actually at room temperature. Yay me! All right, now that I've got all of the butter mixed in, except for this annoying bit, I'm gonna scrape this down and then we're gonna swap out our paddle for a dough hook and keep beating. And mix in there a little bit of the flour. We may not need all of it. We reserved half a cup of flour to, we're gonna add it in one tablespoon at a time, mixing only until we have a smooth, very soft, somewhat sticky dough. So we'll see how long that takes. This reminds me of making brioche dough. That looks smooth, slightly sticky. I did end up using all of the flour. So now I'm going to let this, I'm gonna cover it and I'm going to put it in a warm place and let it rise for an hour and a half. So I need to liberally butter the pan. So we're gonna do that. I checked on the dough and it has risen and is incredibly sticky. So we'll butter the pan and my hands and then we'll transfer it into this pan. To make sure that we get all the little places it doesn't stick basically using the butter like soap because the the um batter is so sticky work it out to the edges i'm just sort of like patting and pushing Cover it with plastic wrap and it's going to sit overnight in the fridge. Into the fridge it goes. Good morning! The cake is in the fridge, has been all night. So now we are going to start making the topping. And we have our corn syrup, heavy cream, vanilla. I'm just going to whisk that, whisk that together. It is cold this morning, so the cornstarch is a little hard to whisk in. 
that part's done. Start with our butter, more butter, sugar, more sugar, brown sugar, salt. All right, we're gonna cream all these things together until they are light and full. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna add in our egg. Mix that until it's just combined. All right, now I'm gonna add in alternating part of the flour half. I'm going to mix that in, then we're going to add in the cream, then the rest of the flour, then more of the cream. And the rest of the flour. Alright, that's fully combined. We're going to put it in a piping bag. Alright, the easiest way I know to put something in a piping bag is to put a piping bag in a glass. <clears throat> That way it holds it upright and then dollop it in. She does say you can just dollop this on the cake instead of piping it, but I thought piping it would be neater. Just gonna squeeze that down. Here's our cake. I'm going to cut tip off and we are going to spread this out so I'm not trying to be like super neat or anything. Alright, now we're going to spread this out. Now she says to be sure and go all the way to the edges because that's where you get your most delicious caramel gooey bits. Alright, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's definitely not, but it is fully covered. So now we're going to put it in the oven. hot just jiggles a little bit in the middle so now we're gonna let it cool all the way all right it's completely cold so I'm just gonna powdered sugar it and we'll be done love this little wand here are my final thoughts this is fine the flavor is nice and buttery the topping is very good and the edges have a wonderful caramely chewiness but honestly, for all the effort, I think I'll make something else next time. It's not that this was bad. It's more that if I'm going to consume all of the calories I know are in this, I really want it to be worth it, and I'm just not sure this is. A few important metrics. Is this recipe worth making at home, with one being Oreos, totally not worth making, and five being chocolate chip cookies, totally worth making? I'd say this recipe's a two. <laughs> It's not hard, and the flavor and textures are nice, but no one in my house was begging for a second piece. Can or should this recipe be made in advance, with one being souffle, absolutely not going to keep well, and five being fruitcake, will literally keep forever? I'd say this recipe's a four. Yes, if you are going to make it with all of the resting and rising, you definitely don't want to be trying to get this done in one day. But it is best the day you bake it, so keep that in mind. How hard was this recipe, with one being instant pudding and five being the multi-layer death by chocolate cake I make make someday? I'd say this recipe is a two. It's not hard. As far as cakes go, it's really as easy as they come. There are no special ingredients or technique in or techniques involved. It's fine. If you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload a new video every Friday. And hit that like button if you liked it. If you have a recipe you'd like to see me try, please put it in the comments. And I'll see you next week.